Last year in June, Apple showed off their brand new groundbreaking universal control feature, which absolutely blew the minds of everyone watching the keynote, including myself. And what it allowed you to do was to magically control your iPad from your MacBook or Mac alone and just switch over to the iPad and then switch over to the Mac and then to another Mac, all with one keyboard and trackpad built into a MacBook. And it was just mind blowing because it works using AirPlay and Bluetooth automatically without having to do anything else. And if that wasn't magical enough, it even enabled you to drag and drop files to and from your Mac and iPad devices just like that. So this is basically the dream multitasking setup for people who have both a Mac and an iPad, especially with the fact that you can transfer files easily without having to go into AirDrop or anything like that. And when Apple originally announced it, they said it was gonna be coming later in the fall, but unfortunately that never happened. But finally, after almost eight months, Apple has just released the new universal control feature within the latest developer beta versions of macOS and iPadOS. So that is exactly what I have downloaded and installed on both of these Apple devices. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how it works and I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to get it set up and use it. So let's get right into it. First up, if you're watching this video at a later date, there's a good chance that this feature has already officially launched across Apple's devices. So the first step is to make sure you've updated the software on both your Mac and your iPad. And now the second step is to make sure you're signed into the same iCloud account on both devices or else it's not gonna work. So don't forget this step. And now getting into the actual setup, it should work by itself automatically by default, but if it doesn't, you can go over on your Mac and go into the system preferences or the settings, then go down to the display options, then click on advanced, and here you should see all of the new options. The first one is to allow your cursor and keyboard to move between a nearby Mac or iPad. Then you have the next one, which is it allows you to push through the edge of the display to connect to a nearby Mac or iPad. And then finally, you have the option to automatically reconnect if you always have it set up like this at home and you always want it to work automatically without having to do anything. And now moving over to the iPad side, you're gonna wanna go into the system preferences, then go down to general, then go to AirPlay and hand off. And here you should see the handoff enabled and the new cursor and keyboard control beta option that should be enabled by default as well. So make sure that is on. Now, if you've gone through this step and you're having some issues and it's not automatically working, another thing you can do is go down into the display settings on the Mac, click add display, and you should see your iPad under the section that says link keyboard and mouse. So if you see it, just go ahead and click it. And there you go, you should see the connection. You have your MacBook Pro on the left and the iPad on the right. Now this is really cool because Apple is able to instantly see where your iPad is. So if you move this over to the other side, it'll automatically detect it. So that is really awesome. And I do like the extra little detail that they have your wallpaper shown there as well. So that's really cool. So let's go ahead, close that down and let's test it out. All right, here we go. The moment of truth. Oh, look at that, it's so seamless. And it's perfect, look, it's perfectly matching the speed. Wow, that's incredible, there you go. We have it on the iPad and we can simply just go into, <laughs> into Google, just like that. And now I wanna try out the, oh, the gestures work. It's perfectly smooth. And now I'm back. Wow, this is incredible. I cannot believe how good this works for a beta. I don't think there is any latency at all. And look, I can even go in, I'm controlling the brightness, everything from the MacBook trackpad. I wonder what will happen if I switch over and use the actual iPad's magic keyboard trackpad. Look, it, it instantly took over. And look, as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but it swapped the trackpad, the cursor, back to the Mac as soon as I switch to the iPad. So now let's see what will happen if I go back in. Seamless! Okay, look, I'm gonna use this. Bam, it resets. Let's see what happens if I turn off the display. 
There you go, it's back. It's perfectly seamless. And now let's go ahead and test out the keyboard. Look at that, no latency. Let's check out a uh, Max Tech video. Just like that. I'm controlling everything and it's so precise too. Look at that, comments. There's no latency, guys. Wow, it's so fast. And if I switch back to this one, oh, it's instant. And now the next thing I wanna test out is if I can move a Safari tab over to the iPad. I wonder if that's possible, let's see. And nope, looks like that does not work. You cannot move a tab over. What if I move a full window over? Okay, the full window does not move over. Unfortunately, that does not work. All right, now let's say you wanna use your iPad as the main device to control the MacBook. So, got the trackpad right here, and let's move over. Look at that! <laughs> you got the MacBook cursor. Everything works. Keyboard, <laughs> no issues. This, I can't believe it, this is magical. This is like the craziest unexpected feature that Apple has ever made. And it's crazy because this is also gonna work with desktop Mac. So you could use your iPad to control a desktop Mac or vice versa, or like a MacBook to control the desktop Mac. This is just absolutely insane. All right, now what about doing something like copying and pasting? So let's type in Max Tech YouTube, copy that, go over here and paste it. <laughs> Wow, guys, that is gonna be so useful because imagine you're doing like spreadsheets or something else like that, or you got a Word document over here, you're working on something else here, you wanna copy and paste, it just works. Now, by far the coolest feature that Apple showed off was drag and drop support, so let's see if it works. Look at that, I just dragged it over and I can access it. Just like that, there wasn't even a loading bar. It literally just moved over. Let's try a video. Okay, I'm gonna grab this video from like one of our tests. Actually, I'm gonna use the MacBook keyboard. Just move it over. No! Look at that, it's transferring. And there you go. Looking up to the It's all playing. The I can't believe it. All right, let's try multiple. All right, this can be the moment of truth right here. No way, it just added them in. Multiple select, drag and drop works perfectly fine. Now what if we try the reverse? Let's go from the MacBook over to the iPad. No, it worked, there it is. Let's go ahead and go over to the files app. Let's move over some basic files. Let's see, a zip file. Boom, DMG file. I can't believe it transferred that quickly, guys. Splash Fox Blender Project. That did not work. Looks like the file is unsupported, but everything else, like these zip files, working perfectly. I literally just can't believe it works so seamlessly and so smoothly. It just blows my mind. And just the drag and drop feature alone, not having to go into AirDrop and transfer it over, I just can't believe it works so well and it's so useful. I could see myself using this, and Apple, you seriously killed it with this feature. So if you guys agree with me, go ahead and leave your comments below, let me know what you think, and if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one, and definitely check one out right over there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.